Hi, I'm going to run through a work solution for a CSTR problem that involves two CSTRs connected in series. It's a slightly more challenging application of the mass balance equation for a CSTR and it's very similar to equations or problems that have appeared on test papers in the past. So if we look at the question statement to begin with, we see that a CSTR is fed with a solution which we call reactant A that has a concentration of 10 kilomoles per meter cubed and the flow rate of that stream coming in is 0.02 meters cubed per second. The product mixture, so the solution coming out of that first CSTR is going into a second CSTR and that second reactor has twice the volume of the first one. The two in series have a conversion of 80%. The reaction involved is A being converted to B, which is first order in with respect to A, and the rate constant is 0.2. And we see at the bottom there the governing equation. Here's the graphic of our system, and we see that the first, this first reactor has a volume which we'll denote as V. The product mixture from that first reactor flows into the second reactor and rather than defining a new variable for the size of the second reactor, we'll just use the same uh, volume as for the first reactor and double it for the second one. We assume as usual that there's no change in the density, so the volumetric flow rate coming into the first reactor is the same as going into the second reactor and it's that is going out which we'll call V. The overall conversion is 80%. So in this case, we can actually draw the system boundary around both reactors because we're talking about the overall conversion. So that's the conversion that is achieved by both reactors. So just like the definition of conversion for a single CSTR, the definition for CSTRs in series is just the difference in concentration between the inlet and the outlet divided by the inlet concentration. If we rearrange that and solve for CA3, keeping in mind that CA1 is 10 kilomoles per meter cubed, we get our answer for the exit concentration, which is 2 kilomoles per meter cubed. So now we need to write our overall mass balance equations for the two CSTRs. So starting with our first CSTR, we write our general mass balance equation, which is that the flow in minus the flow out minus the disappearance term for A is equal to zero. Our flow in term is given by the volumetric flow rate we know is 0.02 meters cubed multiplied by 10 which is a concentration coming in kilomoles per meter cubed minus 0.02 times CA2 so we don't know at this point what the concentration at point 2 is minus the volume of the reactor multiplied by our reaction rate constant multiplied by CA2 Similarly, we can write the overall equation for reactor 2. Now in this case we don't know the concentration coming into reactor 2, but we do know the concentration coming out because we calculated it in the previous stage. It was 2 kilomoles per meter cubed. And our volume now is 2V rather than just V, and we know the concentration coming out. So please make special note of the, the different volume terms in those two equations. For equation 1 corresponding to reactor 1, our reactor volume is V, whereas for reactor 2, it is 2V. So what we effectively have now is a series of two equations, our two mass balance equations for the two CSTRs, 
and two unknowns. And those two unknowns are the concentration of A at point two, CA2, and the variable V, which is the volume of the first reactor and is half the volume of the second reactor. So there's our equation one. So there's different ways that you can try to solve those two equations simultaneously. I'm going to present one method to do it by hand here, and that is to rewrite equation one in terms of CA2. And you can see the expression for CA2 there. can substitute that expression for CA2 into equation 2. So there it is, CA2 substituted into equation 2, if we expand the brackets, we get this expression, and then because we've got V in both the numerator and the denominator of the second term in the equation, we'll multiply both sides of that equation, so multiply each term by V. So what we have now is a quadratic equation in terms of V squared and V. So if we rearrange and combine those terms, we have 0 equals negative 0.8 V squared minus 0.16 V plus 0.02. So if you recall, we can find the roots a quadratic equation using this formula, a very famous one. And in our equation, those coefficients a, b, and c are negative 0.8, negative 0.16, and 0.02 respectively. So on this final slide, I'm just going to work through the solution to that quadratic equation. Note the 0.16 inside the square root there doesn't have to be a negative because when we square it, it obviously comes out positive anyway. So the two solutions that we find to that equation are that the volume is 0.087 cubic metres or negative 0.287 metres cubed. Obviously it's not physically realistic to have a negative volume and so we can discard the second of those two solutions to the quadratic equation and volume of reactor 1 is 0.087 meters cubed. 
and that's actually what was asked of us in the question statement. We could now go back and substitute that into our expression for CA2 if we were also interested in knowing what's the, the concentration of the stream between the two reactors, but we weren't asked for that in the question statement. And that's it.